that she walks them through her house and mom very reasonably is like hmm you know what I was raised in like whatever shit show Tennessee thing you were supposed to be raised in I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to have a mega mansion and she's like you're you're ruining the bit mom you're ruining the bit (laughs) Tammy actually takes out a bible at one point and mom's like stop stop put the bible down you sell dick pumps I saw it (laughs) yesterday unless you're about to show me the section on dick pumps in there I'm gonna need you to back the fuck down (laughs) god awful movie 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because they won't stop making the damn things. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. I'm so happy. This movie backfired so badly <laughs> <laughs> for Christian people. It, well, and it, it, well, and for the actors involved. Okay, and sitting <laughs> 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend Eli Bostic. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Better than Jim Baker, Noah. Okay. Better than Jim Baker. You'd almost have to be. Low bar to clear, but yeah. Okay, so tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched The Eyes of Tammy Faye. It's the story of the saddest movie theater ever, plus me, just weeping with laughter. (laughs) (laughs) They got so mad. They did. (laughs) So, Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you're a Christian movie critic and you've sat through literal years of open mouth church audiences applauding for all the wrong things and you wanted to see them ruin their brunch by misreading a title, you <laughs> will love this movie. We're going to get to our theater experiences of this movie, but for my best worst, I almost went with best, best theater experience. <laughs> Alright, so but this, here's the fucked up admission that I have to make up front. I didn't get the theater experience. I didn't do the homework for this one. I missed the 17 minute window where it was in theaters last month (laughs) because there's a documentary of the same name that this is based on. And I saw that I could get that. I thought that that was this. And then there was no. You could only get tickets to this in theaters with a PlayStation 5. It was really (laughs) hard. (laughs) That's it. Exactly. So I did, however, watch the documentary that it's based on. I lived through the 80s, which is helpful. And I thoroughly perused a few online synopses. So I feel like I could fake my way through this one. Yeah. And don't worry about it. I mean, Heath never watches the movie. So you're still way ahead. I I watch the movies so many times. And why do you ask so many questions when we review them? I'm a curious person. Also, it's called a setup book. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe learn to improvise. Coward. All right. So is is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? I would. Noah, I would. Best worst. Hand jobs. Yeah. Really? <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. Yeah, neither was I. Neither, <laughs> neither was my, was my audience. Oh, you beat me to it. Everybody was terrified. That's a theme of this movie. The theme of the movie, I think, is Tammy Faye Baker giving hand jobs. But nobody knew that going in. So <laughs> I was just delighted yeah. in glee. Yeah. And everybody else is just like, what's happening? Why is that guy so happy? No, a quick question about the documentary. Does it mention how much she liked to drive the stick shift? No. It didn't. Okay. It. <laughs> we, I was really cheated in the documentary, actually, uh, apparently. You sure were. Oh, and of course, not having seen it, I just went with best worst reason for permanent skin damage. Now, this is apparently a self-diagnosis from a person who eats organic, so who knows? But Jessica Chastain said in interviews that the very weight of the makeup she had to wear for this part did permanent damage to her skin. <laughs> <laughs> Look, anyone who steps inside the mind of Tammy Faye for long enough is coming out damaged. I'm yeah, well, that's true. Here. That's true. I'm going to go with best worst tribute to a dead guy's wife. What? Look. We say some mean shit about deserving people on this show. One might argue our job is saying mean shit about deserving people on this show. But I will never say anything a quarter as mean about anyone we ever talk about as this movie (laughs) is mean to Jim Baker. Look, Jim Baker's a piece of shit. He sucks. 
But there was a part of him that loved Tammy Faye. And now the most Googleable thing about his late wife is that he was a fraud, cheater, gay, and she hated him and died sad and hating him. Yep. There are very few people who deserve this movie about their dead wife. Jim Baker just happens to be one of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what, I got a lot of notes to scribble on my arm for this test, so I'm going to need a quick break. But we'll be back in a flash with all the inexplicably ordained oddities that are the eyes of Tammy Faye. Okay. What about Junk Trunk? Damn. I'm still subscribed to Junk Trunk. How much is that? That is $20 a month. Yeah, for sure. Get rid of that one. Hey, hey guys, what you doing? Oh, hey, Noah. Eli ran out of money again, so I'm helping him with his subscriptions. He's got a lot. Uh, okay, Eli, so how about Baby Snack Box? Oh, definitely cancel that one. They were very deceptive in their advertising. I'm not sure they were. Keith, Eli, if you guys want to get rid of old subscriptions you've got, why not just try Truebill? What's Truebill? Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't need, don't want, or simply forgot about, like... Two gyms. You're a member of two gyms? You never know, No, I might go back. I might yeah. go back to the gyms. I feel like we know, for sure. Besides, canceling this stuff is so difficult. Can't I just ignore these payments and hope they go away? Actually, because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel, Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. It's true. I tried out Truebill when they became a sponsor, and they found me $50 a month in savings. Wait, Keith, if you already knew about Truebill, why are we doing this? So that I can see how many vegan snack box subscriptions you have. I like snacks, okay? I am a fan of snacks. Would we say snacks? Don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash awful movies. Go right now. Truebill.com slash awful movies. It could save you thousands a year. Truebill.com slash awful movies. Okay, what about Pugs in Loungewear Monthly? Oh, keep that one. Yeah, yeah, I figured. Can you give a buddy subscription to that one? <laughs> Hello. Oh, hi. Um, can we help you? Y'all are writers. Uh, I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. we are writers. Did you need something? Yeah, no, so I'm I'm Jim Baker. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, you no, are. hi. Nice You're to Jim Baker. Meet you. So, so I, 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 yeah, I, I read the script y'all sent over for the movie. Uh huh. And yeah, what'd you think? Well, is it's all the nice that Mister Garfield and them other actors is going to be in it. Yeah, really cool. Yeah, Good super cast, cool. Right? Yeah, super excited. Maybe, maybe I'm a little bit sensitive, but it kind of seems like, well, uh, it's like maybe the movie's about what a loser I am as a theme. Like, like Tammy was a relatively innocent person whose husband was a secretly gay fraud rapist con man. Rapist con man. Yeah, that's what the movie. Yeah, you about. nailed it. You actually, I'm glad you got that from what we wrote. Oh, okay. Then, uh, wait, please don't make this movie. Still gonna make the movie. I'll give you a magic blanket. No. Nope. Gonna gonna make it twice now. Damn it. Gonna make two. Damn. Three now. <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown. And once again, of course, this was a field trip. So, gentlemen, we've already talked about it quite a bit. <laughs> Tell me how the theaters were for this one going in. <laughs> okay. I'll start with the ticket guy at my theater, who is quite certain the vaccine is a conspiracy so that was fun <laughs> and then i got into the theater and there's a couple there that thought the vaccine is a conspiracy so yeah that was how it started for me <laughs> so i feel like i'm gonna reveal this at the end of the review so let me i'm just gonna set the stage i'm not gonna reveal it my theater was absolutely 100 percent except for me full of a church group. Oh, really? <laughs> now, I will also say this. I had seen Heath's notes because Heath saw this movie before me. So I knew how many hand jobs were a coming at this <laughs> church group. <laughs> was your seat turned backwards the whole time? I, I, I literally almost <laughs> ran outside and I was like, hey, man, I got a weird request. <laughs> I'm going to bring in a folding chair and I'm going to watch these people watch this movie. <laughs> Do you have a reverse rivet gun? Is that what it would be? I don't know. <laughs> so. Also, one other thing about my theater, I got to listen to that same couple. They got mad about the Spanish language movie in the preview. <laughs> that bothered them. And then the guy was like, uh, I'm going to get more butter on my popcorn. So he's on the way. And <laughs> the wife is like, 
do you know how many calories are in that butter? And he goes, do you know? And then he went and got more butter. Well, there, <laughs> there you go. go. <laughs> yeah. Can I get more butter with this popcorn? Pretty much encapsulates all of my cinematic experiences since we started God Awful Movies. <laughs> to <Yeah>. the top. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. So it seems to me from the notes that the first thing the movie does is, is give you a second to come to grips with the fact that she really does look like that. It's so dark. There's this fucking... We see her getting made up like when she's older, mm -hmm. right? I think this is supposed to be like right before the last performance of the movie. I thought this was Gene Simmons at this moment. <laughs> I was like, oh, cool. Kisses in this. Interesting. And the makeup person is like, oh, can I get some of that makeup off for you? And she's like, no, it's tattooed on my face. And then the person's like, oh, so it's physically impossible to not make you look like a clown. And she's like, yes. That's where the movie starts, <laughs> my friends. Now, I, I should say, this is a recreation of a scene from the documentary. So there was a documentary made in, in the year, released in the year 2000, I think, that this is all based on. And this is an actual scene from that where, where she goes to be on the Roseanne Barr show. And they're like, my God, she showed up all made up. And she's like, no, this is just, this is what I actually look like in reality. This is what I did to my face. <laughs> They're shooting hoses at her. It's staying the same. <laughs> this doesn't make sense. Sander. Bring the sander from the tech guys. <laughs> all right. So then now we're going to flash all the way. Knowing what we have to look forward to, we're going to flash all the way back to 1952 when little Tammy was just 10 years old. Yeah. Dreaming of looking like a dead body on a corpse bride bad day. <laughs> <laughs> I did enjoy that she seemed to know just how stupid religion is as a young <laughs> child here. Yeah. I wrote in my notes, she's looking into church and thinking, man, that seems like a good con. I want in on that. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> well, yeah. So and we see a little of her awesome Christian upbringing. Yeah. So this is a big thing. And I, I think it's big in the documentary, too. You'll have to tell me, no, because I haven't actually seen it. But like she wasn't allowed to go to church as a child for a really long time because her mom was divorced and she was the child of the first marriage. So. But by the time she actually got to go to church, it was so amazing for her. No, so that none of that was in the documentary. No. Okay, excellent. Good. I'm glad to hear it. Because the movie's going to try and humanize her with it for the first, like, hour and a half. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, this is where she starts playing with hand puppets and mm -hmm. talking to herself. And I was like, wow, this is not looking good for Christianity. It leads directly to... Arguing with yourself using hand puppets if you're into Christianity, which I mean, really, that's a great summation of what it's like to yeah. be a Christian. Yeah. She has a dinner with her family where she's like, I want to go to church. And her mom is like, they'll know about my sins. And then afterwards, the puppet gives her the Ray Comfort treatment. The puppet's like, you're going to burn in hell forever, Tammy Faye. And she's like, no, Mr. Big McKenzie, don't you say that to me. <laughs> well, OK, but yeah, we have to establish her two personality traits religiosity and puppets hand jobs makeup oh, and right, puppets, puppets. <laughs> yeah so yeah the, the puppets will become hand jobs as she gets older but yeah mm -hmm. oh they're a hand job that's that's the yeah okay right Got yeah it. no this, yeah. it's all it's all connected together it's actually very well written it actually kind of is like it's a pretty good movie I, at times i was like is this good I think it's I think it's OK. I mean, it was certainly Jessica Chastain certainly thought it was Oscar bait. <laughs> she put together an amazing performance, though. She was the highlight for me. Jessica Chastain. Right. On. I've seen some clips where she's pretty amazing. She she really embodied the role. Yeah. OK, so then we cut to her at church just going all in. <laughs> OK, so, <laughs> Noah, this is a slight adjustment from the documentary. What is the story according to the documentary? Great okay, question. I, w I am so disappointed that this didn't make it in. So at the beginning of the documentary, her brother tells the story of her praying away a wart on her finger. And that being the way, so she, she prayed to God that he would get the, the wart off of it. And, and it was, and God told her, stick the wart in the cup during communion and it'll melt away. And it did, <laughs> according to the brother. And that's what brought her to Jesus. I just love the idea of some, her stick her hairy ass wart into the cup that everybody has to drink out of and them going, Oh no. Oh, yeah. she's oh. first in line. Why are you first? <laughs> The wart died of the feces that was yeah, in that right. water that we know statistically is like really at a high level in the holy water. No, they go for a more dramatic approach to the movie. She goes up to the front. She starts speaking in tongues and then she pees herself. And I wrote in my notes, OK, but when I do it, it's a felon. <laughs> 
Do you think she just like leaned into it too hard and was like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to piss myself too, to make this really look good. Or was that like <laughs> an accident? What happened? Carried away in the moment. <laughs> Commits to the bit. She was probably going to piss herself around then anyway. And yeah. It just, just so happened. Look, she'd go on to marry and stay married to Jim Baker. So this is a person who commits. That's what we're learning about this character. Staying married to Jim Baker is the pissing yourself. Yourself of (laughs) marriage. Yeah, Yeah. there you go. Fair. Uh, Speaking of which, it's now time for us to flash into the future to meet her hubby, Jim. Oh, and this is... I don't know who at this Bible university like slipped a hundred dollar bill under the writer's room door every morning before they got to work. But like this whole scene is to establish like nobody at this Bible school like Jim and Tammy Faye Baker. So stop saying they went here. (laughs) (laughs) He goes up and he gives basically a prosperity gospel pitch. And the teacher's like, hey, man, that kind of con man isn't going to be mainstream Christianity for 16 minutes. You're weird. And so him and Tammy do like a fucking hype man back and forth coming up with Facebook scene, except it's robbing your grandma for 40% of a retirement (laughs) check. Yeah, he's given a little speech here, like a sermon, and he says, God wants us to be rich. And one guy in the audience raises his hand. He's like, but it says, blessed be the poor. And he's like, go fuck yourself. Cut. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Them too. Whatever. I want to be rich. (laughs) <laughs> he also says, we Christians are taught to accept failure. And I was like, hey, man, did you hear it? Did you hear, it? <laughs> did you hear the hand puppet thing that you just did? Did you hear me? You talk. All right. And then, we, of course, we have the um, like, boy, it sure seems like we're destined for a much more cinematic life scene. But this one took a twist in the notes that I was not expecting. Um, <laughs> Neither was I. I checked up on this. This is apparently true. Jim Baker was, so this is the like, Tammy, can I tell you my deep and terrible secret? And I was like, oh, you're a rapist and a closet homosexual who also forced yourself on a bunch of male workers at your company. And he's like, no, I ran a kid over with my car. Yes. Yeah. I mean, think about that. This was to soften the blow of his actual backstory. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> to soften it, he was like, I murdered a child with my car. <laughs> Fucking Yikes. That makes the curse make way more sense, though, now, you know? Yeah. I also want to point out, and look, like, this movie does a pretty good job of showing what bags of shit they are, but it also pretty completely lays all the blame on Jim Baker. And we can't forget that, like, Tammy Faye Baker was not a good person, right? She was perfectly happy to rob the elderly of their money while she sang Christmas songs dressed like a disco ball. Like she was aware (laughs) who they were getting their money from. Yes. And that made this sort of like meet cute scene a little yucky for me. My entire notes are just like, would we make a meet cute about Brock Turner or Harvey Weinstein? I feel like we can get to the conning people part. Well, so and and we should be super clear on that. The whole point of the documentary that this is based on was to rehabilitate the image of Tammy Faye to some degree. And and it has a very woe is me. I have to clean up my own kitchen after I cook kind of a feel to it. Like, oh, I just I'm, I'm just all alone in this gated community with nobody to keep me company, you know. Right. And of course, the movie leans into that as well. But the movie is also the movie is not being nice to her as much, I felt like. I didn't okay, see the documentary, but I get the impression that the movie, at least a little bit, is directed by Michael Showalter. It wasn't supposed to be, like, all positive. And this moment in particular, the audience that I was with started to maybe sense that a little bit. Because <laughs> he's telling this story, and he's like, I killed a child with my car. I had to, like, the, the, the grill, I was picking little pieces of child oh, out of the front of my grill. And everybody's like, what's happening? Is this okay? Is this leading to something good about God? See, my church was still not ready. They were still like, okay, yeah, we all hit a kid now and then. I get it. <laughs> Pick up line in school is long and boring. You try and cut around, you catch a kid. I've been there speaking my language. <laughs> Those Cadillac grills, it's actually, yeah, I have one of those too. Yep. (laughs) But speaking of our churches being unsettled by the movie. Yeah, I guess the director decided we needed to see a bit of heavy petting. Okay. Perhaps. (laughs) Just to be clear, Noah, before I go into this scene, there's nothing in the documentary about how hard these two dry humped. Is there? 
there's no mention whatsoever of over the pants work or <laughs> anything like that. No. How many hand jobs in the original? Like two dozen? Like <laughs> there's so much fucked up sex stuff in this movie. Like the addition that this movie made based on Noah's notes and our notes is that Michael Showalter walked into the room, threw a copy of this documentary on the table and was like, I want to see every time they dry humped from age 18 <laughs> to 81. You hear me? I'll see you in a month. Yeah, I mean, the documentary was only about an hour and 20 minutes long. This was 2.20 or so. They added an hour of dry humping to the documentary, essentially. Yep. That's how you fill out a movie. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's how you do it. That's how it's done. Okay, so this scene is when my theater fully sensed the problem mm -hmm. because... Mm -hmm. She actually gives him an over the pants hand job, and my theater lost its goddamn mind. Yep. They had no idea what to do. Amazing. Yeah. There were a lot of kids in my audience, a lot of moms <laughs> oh, throwing no. bodies in front of a lot of Sunday afternoon movie <laughs> watchers. All right. So, but apparently, the over the pants handy wasn't enough. So now it's bath time. Yeah. God, I've never felt better about being underprepared for an episode. <laughs> Before bath time, we have to clarify. So, what happened is, and I was like, I put this together post watching the movie. This dry hump scene is to justify the fact that they actually, the Bakers dropped out of Bible college, which is saying a lot, right? If you didn't make it in pretend school, you can't make it anywhere. <laughs> but they dropped out of Bible college because they just had to get married and they just had to get married because why over the pants when you can go under the pants? So she shows up at mom's house, the hero of the movie, and she's like, this is Jim Biker. I love him. And mom's like, fuck you which is by the way what mom will say to everything she says and does she's the greatest thing in this movie <laughs> every single thing that happened she's just, fuck your face this is so fucking dumb i can't believe they made a movie about this i hope christian people are watching this in the theater this is like maximum smoking a day no illusions put him in a wig put him on the set of this movie and be like what do you really want to say to jim baker noah <laughs> that is the mom character in this fucking film. So at the end of the last scene, mom's like, fuck him, fuck you. And so bath time, which is what we're getting to now, is her comforting him because her mom is like, this guy looks like a total loser. Oh, nice. Nice. So him sulking in a bathtub. Yeah, I really... Said I missed that. Yeah, she gives him a heege to cheer him up. And when I say a bunch of people exited my theater at this point, it was as though there were a fire, right? <laughs> like, if you remember that scene in the Titanic where they're like stomping over the children? <laughs> And I'm just, I'm just, I'm loving it. I am just, oh, I'm tweaking my nips. I, if I could have like pulled the lever and the door shuts and I put on the saw mask and I'm like, no, you're all watching this huge scene. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. So with hand job number two out of the way, I guess we're, I'm going to keep track. I'm gonna, hold on. Let me get my chalkboard here. So with hand job number two out of the way, we really dig into the puppet aspect of their origin story. Okay. This is so sad because the truth of the matter is like Jim and Tammy could not make it in the fucking tent revival circuit. Right. Right. There is no more gullible audience short of like a chiropractor's waiting room <laughs> where you're selling healing crystals where these guys blew it. But they did. So what they settled on and how they built their brand was she would do children's entertainment and then he would be like, Jesus. And she'd be like, great, more children's entertainment, Jesus. And then she'd sing a song. And this is the beginning of that. Okay, and I want to point this out because this was in the documentary and this is just amazing. So the main puppet that they used is just, it was a porky pig puppet that they put a wig on and said, no, see, it's a totally different character. It's a lady now. And apparently all of the puppet stuff they did was unscripted. And very often it would be Tammy Faye like bitching at Jim about something she was pissed off about <laughs> through the puppets. They would have like on-air couple fights with the puppets. Anyway, I just, I, I love that little detail. But yeah. yeah. Oh, I, why did the movie deny us that? Just like, right? hey, hey, kids, today we're going to be talking about emptying the fucking dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And about how hand jobs actually are awesome, and I'm better than you at it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. So then we get a quick puppeting montage, right? We see them like 
puppeting across the nation to build their name. Yeah. Well, and then so and then we get him sitting around dreaming of something bigger than than puppet church when who should show up on TV. But Pat, don't call me Marion, even though that's my name, Robertson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he ends up being kind of one of the good guys in this movie wow. because the Bakers are so <laughs> shitty that Pat Robertson is like the foil to their shitty. It's fantastic to watch this movie try to decide who the good and bad guys are, right? Because <laughs> everyone in this movie is a, like, fire and brimstone worthy villain. So when the movie's like, I don't know, maybe the leg press guy isn't that bad. Stop Googling these people, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> he went to jail, too? <laughs> Fuck. They're watching him on TV. And Heath, I'm so glad you have similar things in your notes. It very much seems like she's going to jerk him off to Pat Robertson for a second, right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Wait, did that not actually happen? Did I just imagine that moment? <laughs> you just imagined it. She does not actually jerk him off to Pat Robertson. Oh, I remember a lot of cum in this very moment. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was you. <laughs> oh, that tracks. That tracks. Okay. I, I think I know why your theater was upset. <laughs> it wasn't this. They were more upset about the movie. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> So he's watching Pat Robertson and he's like, oh, Timothy, imagine how many people we could be in front of. And she's like doing the slow circle around his nips. But their eyes are, to be clear, both glued to a 1960s Pat Robertson. So, yeah, it's a, it's a <laughs> deeply sensual scene. My theater was in denial at this point. They were just like, she's probably churning butter just out of the frame. That's a normal thing. They probably have butter churn there. It's not as bad as we thought. I think they're settling into the movie now. <laughs> they got a little smaller one. One of those hand ones. You can get them on the made for TV. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but then, and again, this is just such a weird thing. So do you know the real story of how they ended up on Pat Robertson's show. No. Uh. So I tried to find this. I could not find it anywhere. I was hoping it's in the documentary. But what it is in the movie is their car gets towed because Jim didn't make the payments. Fuck you, Jim Baker. And then a man literally walks up to them where they're standing there trying to figure out what to do. And he's like, hello, I'm a Christian. I saw you last night. Would you like to be on Pat Robertson's network? I have the paperwork right here. And they're like, oh, gee, that does move us to the next part of the movie. This random stranger has the plot <laughs> in his head. That's great. Yeah, I don't know the actual story, but I'm pretty sure it's not that. It's, um... <laughs> Yeah, so now it's time for him to meet one of the movies and reality's main villains. Or I guess you're saying he's not necessarily a villain. I can't make up its mind, but he robes himself. Yeah, I think the whole it's so sad. The whole movie's just like parsing out levels of evil. But technically, in a relative sense, that makes Pat Robertson a good guy. I don't know. It's insane. The movie doesn't make sense. Yeah. And this... So this is apparently real that they just walked onto their puppet hour and were like, hey, everyone, we're starting a new show. It's called The 700 Club and it stars us. And Pat Robertson didn't wasn't going to walk out there and be like, they just made that fucking shit up. I'm sorry. <laughs> but like, apparently the origins of The 700 Club are them just being like, we're on a show. It would be like if I was like, Heath insults a book is our new podcast. Check it out every Tuesday at 3 p.m. <laughs> Well, so, okay, that, that actually is a pretty good idea. I just don't think we should put it out at 3 p.m. That doesn't make much sense at all. So we'll, 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 the Australian community. Yeah, we'll workshop that. So, <laughs> But as, as they presented in the documentary, the origin is that they said, yeah, we'll do a kid's show, but we also want a talk show in the evenings or something along those lines. But, you know, who the hell actually knows? It's everyone's a liar that's involved in any of this Right, yeah, story. It's, it's the Cretans riddle, but with yeah. a biopic. <laughs> okay, I can the one who only tells lies just tell me what one of you would fucking say? Ah, <laughs> oh, this is hard. Why are there so many? And then, because, again, this movie is not constructed super well. Look, I like that it's mean to Jim Baker, and I like that it's mean posthumously to Tammy Faye, but it's constructed so badly that they're like, we're gonna do the 700 Club, and then Via the puppet, she announces that they're going to have a baby. I was just like, damn, this is a jam-packed scene. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like the idea that the puppet got pregnant because all the hand jumps. Nice. That would make sense. Ah, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Where's that montage? <laughs> so, okay, so then we, we, we cut to six months later where I guess Jim is just killing it on the 700 Club. Yes, and to Noah's credit, you mentioned that a lot of this is going to be I'm stuck in the kitchen after all this cooking. This will be the first of 
I cannot describe to you how many scenes of Tammy is stuck at home in her mansion when she would really like to be on TV right now. Oh, wow. <laughs> so she's home and she's pregnant and she calls her mom and she's like, oh, Jim won't fuck me anymore. And her mom's like, why did you call me? I hate you. And she's like, oh, OK, I love you. To which her mother responds, bye. <laughs> <laughs> my grandma's actually done that to me a lot yeah that's what? her standard thing okay she doesn't say nobody wants hand jobs at the end and then hang up like so, yeah. Mom does, basically. Yeah. it's not true by the way sometimes you want to sometimes you want a hand job we will fill the rest of the episode with this fight no <laughs> <laughs> i think they're underrated after watching this movie i i i I think I, I like them a little bit more now. Ugh. Well, there you go. So they couldn't rehabilitate Tammy Faye, but they re rehabilitated the Heej. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Let's really put something positive in the Bringing world. it back. I'm going to call you Heej and right from now on. <laughs> so, Classic. Okay. So then we cut to a pool party at Pat Robertson's place. <laughs> yes. Okay. But again, this is villains looking at other villains through their eyes. So usually... Right. This scene in a movie about good human beings with consciences, they would see how rich Pat Robertson was and they'd be like, oh, my gosh, like what a waste. Like he's not really in it for saving souls at all. They look around this mansion and they're like, how do we get in on this ah, shit? Yeah. <laughs> Whole scene is like fit as many pigs in a blanket in your purse as you can. honey. <laughs> Yeah, they want to be P robes. Well, at one point in this scene, Jerry Falwell shows up. Now, this I, I think is recreating a real event. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, a gas explosion at that moment would have seemed tragic, but the watcher would have known, right? He would have oh, breathed the yeah. sigh of relief. For sure. That timeline solidifies into way better. <laughs> Jerry Falwell shows up with entry music. <laughs> like he's a WWE character here. He does. Like, Enter Sandman starts playing and he's walking in. It's really weird. Well, honestly, the, the, now, and that is a case of if you want somebody to be the villain of a movie with Jim Baker in it and not make that character Jim Baker, how the hell do you manage that? Well, Jerry Falwell's going to fit in really nicely. Yeah, exactly. And this is where, this is the famous scene, and Noah, this is apparently based on reality from your notes, where she dared to sit with the men. Ooh. Yeah, when they were discussing Jim Baker's future. Uh, now, it's reality in that she really said this happened, so. <laughs> this is also where we get the first touch of Tammy Faye being an ally to gay people. And can I plant a flag early and say that, like, Tammy Faye did not totally hop on the boat of like gays are the death of society in the way that like fucking Jerry Falwell did. Congratulations on that, Tammy Faye. Yeah. Great she job. wasn't a fucking ally. There's a scene no. that's worse than this that we're going to get to later in the movie. But this movie makes it seem like every time Tammy Faye got the chance, she was like, oh, Jesus loves the gay people, loves them just the way they are. Well, so and I, I do want to say in God, I'll never say these words together again in Tammy Faye's defense. She was incredibly progressive for the time on issues of LGBTQ equality and talking about AIDS. That is not a compliment to Tammy Faye. That is a condemnation of the 80s. Right. But she actually was very progressive on that issue for the time in a, in a way that like really underscores how disturbing a time it was. Yeah. Like you ever watch a movie that's set in World War II and they always feel obligated to make that Nazi character who's like, I'm not so sure about the Juden. That's what this movie is trying to do with Tammy Faye in the case. She's a centrist Nazi. Yeah, yeah, right, she's yeah. A centrist. <laughs> exactly. She's the character Rolf Fiennes isn't playing. And well, and she antagonizes Jerry Falwell with her love of the gays, correct? Mm-hmm. And your theaters were like, okay, so he's the hero. All right. Okay. So she says, well, Jerry, I think, and he goes, don't call me Jerry. And my theater went, <laughs> I was just I was so because they were so fucking close to me trying to give me COVID at this point that I just kept wanting to skirch over to them and being like, what movie are you watching now? <laughs> there were two hand jobs. What's going on for you? Yeah, right. Because yeah, that was would... butter churning that you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> bath butter. We talked about this. <laughs> Jews don't have no bath butter. Now, of course, though, but Jim is super worried about her antagonizing the very powerful Jerry Falwell with all her progressive attitudes and familiar naming conventions. 
Yeah. And this is where <laughs> fucking Tammy Faye apparently gave Jim Baker the coffee is for closer speech. <laughs> it's such a weird scene. Yeah. He turns to her and he says, Jerry Falwell is a powerful man. And she says, Jim Baker's a powerful man. And he, you can like visibly hear him getting erect against the inside of his fucking zipper. <laughs> and again, it's just like watching Ava be like, Adolf, you're doing the best job you can for Germany. I'm like, what do you want from me, movie? <laughs> but the point is they're going to start their own Christian network with beer and hookers, damn it. Yeah, yeah, because p Robes is stealing their successful show from him. Well, I'll tell you what. Getting screwed out of Christian media empires is going to happen so frequently in their lives that the director and writer of this film decided it would be too repetitive to show all of them. So we're going <laughs> to pause when we come to grips with that. But we're back in a flash with even more of the eyes of Tammy Faye. It's not all she comes to grip with. I still feel like we should have brought something. Yeah, but then it would be the only thing in his apartment. That's true. He has a futon now, though. Oh, well, no, that's true. He does. Hey guys, what up? Keith. Hey buddy, so this is the new place? Yep, yep, new place. So you guys hungry? I'm actually, yeah. Yeah, I can always eat. All right, excellent. Now, uh, Noah, I know you like cheese whiz on your crackers, so I got that for you. Eli, I wasn't sure, so I got you just the crackers. Is the, Sorry, is this all you have for food? Yeah, your- well, you know, I, ju- I just moved. Don't really have the lay of the food landscape yet. I have found a bad Thai place, like really, really bad. Do you, do you guys want really bad Thai food? Um, no, no, not at all. I don't. No, 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 thank you. But Keith, if you want fresh, delicious meals you can make at home, why don't you just try Hello Fresh? Oh, what's Hello Fresh? With HelloFresh, you get fresh pre-measured ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. I don't know, guys. I'm trying to cook for both of you. That's a tall order. Well, HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from every week, including vegetarian, calorie smart, and gourmet options, providing plenty of variety. Okay, but... Is this one of those meal boxes where you got to spend like an hour on one pot of soup? Not at all. With options like quick and easy meals, low prep, one pan, and 10 to 15 minute meals, that's time cut from cooking and cleanup that you can give back to your family or yourself. Yeah, HelloFresh sent us a box to try, and they had delicious meals, but also sandwiches and a to-go food box that made meal prep with a baby a breeze. All right, guys, I'm in. Where do I sign up? Just go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful14 and use code Awful14 for up to 14 free meals, including free shipping. So I go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful14, use the code Awful14 for up to 14 free meals, including free shipping. That's right. All right. So um, you guys want a little tour of the place? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So this here is the room that I live in. Nice. I'm done. It's a good tour, man. Thanks. And uh, the, okay, no, not done yet. This is my Nintendo 64 right here. Okay. Yeah, can we play it? I'd rather you didn't. Okay. Sure. sure. Don't touch. Well, hey there, mama. No hugging. Sure. Sure. Maybe later. No, no, not later. Fuck you. Okay. Okay, isn't it wonderful, Mama? Jim has made us such a lovely house to worship the Lord in. Isn't it wonderful? Eh, it looks like somebody made a museum to suck after suck was finally blasted from the earth. The curtains are nice. I I hate the curtains. Oh, Mama, you're such a grump. Look, Tammy Faye, I know this movie is doing its absolute best to make me seem like some kind of hard-to-please overbearing meanie, but you suck. You're the worst. You're a fraud. You look like Mr. Potato Head and Drag. And there's every reason to believe that whatever your childhood was like, that I hated you as an adult because you were so deserving of hate. Uh, what if I bought you a coat? I mean, yeah, I'll take a coat. Redemption arc. No. No. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. And we're going to open up with their new Christian media empire. Uh, No, not that one pretty sure they just skipped over trinity broadcasting network <laughs> yep. we're on now to the praise the lord network ptl mm-hmm. and we have a them getting rich montage here nice i also like that they have a four second clip where they're like 
Also, we did some minor charity or something, but we mostly just stole it. We're, <laughs> we're going to reveal that we stole this in a car. I don't know. Yeah. You shouldn't really emphasize that part. All right. This is, of course, I, I believe the first time in the movie where Jessica Chastain shows off those pipes. Yeah. <laughs> she is way too good at bad singing as an actor. I was going to say, she sings as well as Tammy Faye Baker sang, so hard to say. <laughs> Yeah, we don't know if she's singing up to that or down to that, really. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Why was this show successful for them? Why did people watch this? I don't understand. Like, honestly, it's, it's kind of like the same reason that we're successful because nobody had really or very few people up to that point had done the whole televangelism thing where you're just taking the church model and you're ramping it up by 80 fucking times and getting this much larger audience or whatever. Well, why don't we have mansions then? Do what? What are we doing wrong? Well, because we're not Christian. We need to give more hand jobs. I don't know. I'll give a hand job for <laughs> anywhere close to the amount of money that Jim Baker stole. I'll jerk off every yep. single member of our audience <laughs> simultaneously. I'll just get. I'll get them all in a bunch like you're making pasta, and yep, I'll, they- just, I'll do it all at once. <laughs> We'll get Eli one of those, you know, you know, those in the stacks where you have the the ladder that like rolls around on the track with something like that. Yeah. Uh, all right. So. So, OK, so we're, we're going to need to do some blueprints. Uh, but first, <laughs> we got to get onto this. Because oh, it's like they were worried that the gam guys weren't going to have enough to talk about because this is where they introduced the dick implant portion of the show. OK. Yeah. OK. <laughs> so this is when they're selling a penis pump on their show? Yeah. Did I have a goddamn stroke? Did they actually do that in the movie and in reality? This was in the documentary. Yeah. What? I, I really didn't expect it would make it into the film, but apparently it did. Yeah. So a really important thing is that like as the show went on and it became more and more obvious like what hucksters they were and how little they knew about the book they apparently liked, it just turned into like, late night Jerry Springer garbage TV, right? Where they would talk about like, you know, fucking penis pumps and cookie recipes and shit. And of course we see this through the lens of the mom, just fucking hating her. It's the best. (laughs) She stops the penis pump portion and she's like, my mama's here, everybody. Hey mama, stand up. And the spotlight comes to mom and mom might as well just be flipping her the double bird the entire time. (laughs) She is the hero of this film. Yeah, yeah. Well, and she has also the framing for the look how big the house is seen too, right? Yeah. So she walks them through her house and mom very reasonably is like, hmm, you know what? I was raised in like whatever shit show Tennessee thing you were supposed to be raised in. I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to have a mega mansion. And she's like, you're you're ruining the bit, mom. You're ruining the bit. (laughs) Tammy actually takes out a Bible at one point and mom's like, stop, stop, put the Bible down. You sell dick pumps. I saw it (laughs) yesterday. Unless you're about to show me the section on dick pumps in there, I'm going to need you to back (laughs) the fuck down. (laughs) Well, yeah, to be clear, they lived an opulent lifestyle even by the standards of televangelists. Other televangelists had to tell the bakers, hey, guys, you're making us look bad. Yes, a huge plot point of this movie will be Jerry fucking Falwell, the multi, multi millionaire con man being like, can you believe how those assholes lived? Yeah. I mean, blessed are the poor. Uh, That's what I read in the Bible. (laughs) What I've always said, who wants to hear about Tinky Winky? (laughs) All right. And then we reach, honestly, one of the most intriguing moments in you guys' notes. There's a bunch of enigmatic notes about frosting and licking. I have no idea what to expect in this. Okay. Okay. This is Jessica Chastain just decided to start making fun of the movie here. Okay. <laughs> I, that's that's my theory. So this is a cupcake episode and Tammy Faye is like, you know, interviewing a cupcake maker. So she's like putting the frosting on like they do with the thing. But she just decided, okay, I'm pretending this is cum. This is yep. what's happening. This frosting is cum. And she, she's just like leading all the way into it. It's the best. I was... So hoping you would tell us this was also in the documentary. Do you remember over on our other show, Scathing Atheist, when we did the Salty the Songbook episode at the end where they bukkakeed that little boy? Mm -hmm, Yeah. I do remember that, yes. If they could called cut and then showed those children this scene, those kids would be like, seems an awful lot like come to me. You guys should bring it in a little bit. At one point, 
point, Tammy Faye's like, I wish you could smell this. And she's wafting the cum. This is a penis with cum. It's so over the top. It's the best. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So then we, we cut to after the show where we start to suspect that maybe old Jim Baker isn't entirely on the up and up. <laughs> yes, this will be the beginning of the secular press hates us because we love Jesus so much persecution complex. The secular press of like 1980 yeah, in the uh -huh. States. Super secular back then, guys. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But so, and, and so this is the, the first of the many revelations from the local press of where the fuck is all the money going? Well, again, this movie is very hard trying to do the like Tammy Faye didn't know, but that's fucking impossible because starting in the 1980s, newspapers were like, I think they're fucking stealing the money. So what happens in this scene is like Jim waves a newspaper very quickly in front of her face and she's like, oh, well, I guess I didn't see what it said. <laughs> <laughs> Merry All right, yeah. Christmas. All right. So then we cut to. More hand stuff if Heath's notes are to be believed here. Heath, are you lying about hand jobs in your God awful movies notes? Absolutely not. I mean, maybe this was me in the theater again. I don't think so. I think this is <laughs> this is also in the movie. She look, Tammy Faye was oiling up her entire body for a hege that involved feet and legs and like the you know, behind your knee area. It's not a hege if it involves feet. That's a feege. Thank you. Yeah. It's a beige. No, that's blowjob. It's by, it's the full body for beige. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. She is greasing herself up. And I got to say, like, that does seem to be the point of the scene, right? Jim Baker's like on the phone being like, no, you tell them I can't pay till Monday and tell them I need eight million dollars for Jesus. And then he turns off and he's like, why do you put so much goop all over you? Oh, and she's like. So you'll fuck me. It was Fabij. We talked about that. We had a cool name for it. Maybe we didn't work out all this nomenclature for nothing. You're going to do the crook behind my knee. We haven't done crook behind knee yet. You said you wanted to try it. It's Christmas. And then Jim Baker just cries about how hard it is to be a big mega church multimillionaire. And I, I do like that this movie made him a big fucking crybaby idiot. Yeah, it was, he was that. Yeah. Look, here's the thing about this movie. Every time I got sad or bored or like confused during this movie, I reminded myself that there's no fucking way Jim Baker didn't go watch this movie. Oh, wow. I'm sure on Pass the Salt or whatever the fuck he's doing these days where he's selling blankets and cancer cures, whatever he's doing, he was like, I'll never see such a thing. It's so hurtful to my wife's dead wife. So blah, 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 blah. But you and I both fucking know. Oh, absolutely. On a Thursday night. He was like, I'm going down to the pool hall. And he got into an empty theater <laughs> and he saw this movie <laughs> and he watched the scene where his wife just fucking hated him and covered herself in liquid just so she could feel. And then he wept at her <laughs> and he was just like, oh, this is what's going to happen when you Google my name forever. Oh. You know what's another good use for my cream that cures COVID and every other disease? Hand jobs, as it yep. turns out. <laughs> yep. All right, so then we get what I assume is the, the scene where Tammy is recording her album. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is supposed to set up the relationship between her and Gary, the sound guy she wanted to fuck? Yes. Okay. Okay. I have so many questions about the reality of this situation because... We're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. You know what? I'm, I'm not, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to put a pin in it right here. I'm just going to say she records her singing and Gary, the sound guy is like, Oh, you sing like an angel. You're the next monster mash. <laughs> Literally. He says, I worked really? on the monster mash and you're better than that. And she's like, Ooh. We also get to see Jim in his baby blue, ice blue tuxedo for Ooh, a second yep. here, mm -hmm. which I, he looks like Elsa's valet or something <laughs> like that. It's it's pretty great. Yeah. I tried on a baby blue tux once. It went real badly. I, I was I was convinced, like, I'm going to go to prom and I'm going to look awesome. No, no. no it, oh, it went badly no. for everyone who ever did that. So. I looked like Elsa's henchman. <laughs> All right, so and, and then we get our, our first glimpse, I guess, of what Jim Baker actually spent the 80s doing, which was begging for money into a camera. Right. <laughs> and this whole scene is to sort of establish that Tammy was too busy making music and she didn't see any of the fraud right. and she just sort of showed up and asked for money when she was told to. 
Yeah, right. So, well, apparently his pitch, and this actually was his pitch for an enormous amount of the time, was we've been exposed as frauds, so we need your money now more than ever. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I guess that's all of Christianity, actually, now that I think about yeah. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All of Christianity, all of our show, a lot of businesses are based <laughs> hey. on this tank. Call in the next 10 minutes and you can fund more of our felonies in the next yeah. 10 minutes. We don't have it. It's, <laughs> it's a really weird sell. <laughs> penis pump. We'll give you a penis pump. Yeah, there you go. We still have a few of those. And then I guess we get another scene of, of Tammy and her mom. This is where she gives her the fur. <laughs> so this, look, there is no redemption arc between Tammy Faye Baker and her mom. She was like, oh, mama. And her mom was like, fuck you, you con man piece of shit. I hate you. But the nicest thing they could think of ever in the history of this relationship is one time she got her mom a coat and her mom didn't like spit on it and throw it in her face. <laughs> so this is their big redemption scene where she's like, please take the coat. And she's like, fine, I'll take the coat. Yeah, well, and of course, it's a fur just because there's nothing that Tammy Faye ever did that wasn't tainted by evil. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> she couldn't wear anything that wasn't suffering. Yeah. <laughs> Is this an orphan pelt? Don't worry about it, Mom. You look great. You look great. You look great. <laughs> Scene ends. She she turns to her mom and she says, you look like a beautiful bear. And I wrote in my notes, he never tells me I look like a beautiful bear. <laughs> he tells me you look like a beautiful bear. <gasps> if he takes the notes that I give him on how to look, it's fine. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then we have a scene so unexceptional that he's literally wrote it down in the notes as new scene. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I was so tired of it at this point. I wrote down, okay, new scene. This movie is bad. I hate everyone except Tammy's mom. Who's <laughs> If if I may part the kimono of our podcast slightly, Heath did the notes, so he went in and did the scenes first. He wrote new scene, and I wrote next to that, hey, great job. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so this is apparently the first time that we're going to broach the Jim Baker's almost certainly a closeted homosexual aspect of the film. Yeah, we see this because he gets in a tickle fight with his like a male assistant. And I just want to say I dislike this movie's implication that Heath and I's tickle fights are anything other than a super serious, super heterosexual war between two men. <laughs> yeah, in you guys' this case, yeah. Wait, I don't. Okay, well, I don't agree with that uh, oh. appraisal of what's happening. Classic no and. <laughs> I don't have an and. Just no. Just no. Okay. <laughs> That's where we draw the line. Interesting. Okay. I, I thought yeah. our tickle fights were somewhat romantic, a little bit romantic. <laughs> okay. So you're saying, would you like to say anything back to that? Or I developed romantic feelings slowly. It was an enemies to lovers relationship. Ah, uh, there you Just, go. That's the real story. I turned my texts about tickle fights. <laughs> All right. So, and then we have to go back to the her and Gary relationship they're practicing music by candlelight they are rehearsing by <laughs> candlelight and he's this is her moment of like her fall from grace right right yeah it's apparently just him kissing her neck while they dry humped yeah well that's that's when you dry hump a woman in your heart you <laughs> dry <humped> her <laughs> in reality I, I don't know honestly i didn't pay super close attention to this scene because my movie theater this was it for them they lost their mind. They were like, get it, car! get it, car! put the movie about Tammy Baker. I don't know what this is. And that's a weird line because she was given hand like this. Is, this is so much less than that. Look, when you hand job your husband to who you love in the bathtub because your mother hates him. A lot of us can relate to that in this fucking AMC <laughs> in the middle of Bayonne, New Jersey. But I will not watch someone dry hump a music producer. I am a Christian. <laughs> I ain't here for that. God, I was not prepared for this much near fuck stuff in the notes. Mm -hmm. But she gets so excited during their dry hump that her water breaks. Yeah. Yeah, so she heads to the hospital to have herself a daughter. Mm -hmm. And I guess I, Jim is starting to get suspicious of her and Gary at this point. Well, because Gary's there. Yeah. What the fuck is he doing there? Yeah. He, he, was, he showed up at the hospital like, okay, maybe he drove her to the hospital. But then he's just like, yeah, I'm her music producer guy. I go in the room now while she delivers a baby. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. I guess he f suspected that there was dry humping because, like, his pants had placenta all over them or something. Oh, okay. For whatever the... I, I mean, look, maybe I read that into the movie and there's no argument, but, like, 
for whatever reason, Jim is now aware of their affair. And like, that is the drama of the movie at this point. Right on. Well, and then adding to that drama is, of course, it's after that pregnancy that Tammy got all the way addicted to Ativan. Mm -hmm. Which this movie wants to sell us as she only got addicted to Ativan because Jim took away the music producer she was dry humping. And, you know, what other choice did she have? Okay, well, no, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, I wrote in my notes. Is this movie's take that she was only so bad because she wasn't allowed to fuck her movie producer? <laughs> Maybe. Also, and it, it, again, just a mystifying choice. This is where we see the Diet Coke thing. Now, this was like a cultural touchstone for her, right? Is that she would constantly be like, I just love Diet Coke, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I feel like Diet Coke would not have given permission for this. There's a bunch of like porny shots of her opening a Diet Coke. And I feel like someone at the Coke company should have called over and been like, we'd love to get rid of that association. You do not have permission to use our logo. Listen, Donald Trump is good PR for us. You are a little bit toxic. <laughs> for our Maybe it's something in the Diet Coke. It could be, you know, but yeah, yeah. So she's down in her Ativan with Diet Coke. Jim is also talking to Ro Messner, who would end up being. Tammy's second husband about building his um, <laughs> heritage, not hate theme park. I don't know. Whatever. Heritage USA. Yeah. He's like, check out it. Check out the plans. We're going to do a religious theme park. These will always go great and never lose money <laughs> forever. <laughs> and he's described. He's basically doing like a Christianity IPO and it's going to be amazing. And he explains how he sold all the shares to heritage USA. Like you could buy it like shares <laughs> of stock and the, the construction guy's like, well, how many shares did you sell? And Jim's like, I don't know, a lot. Many. Yeah. Many. Lots of money's worth. So give us a giant loan. And the guy's like, no. No. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and to add to the complication of the scene, that scene is happening in the foreground. In the background, like Heath yells at Bible Peace Theater, Tammy Faye is just like loudly eating a chocolate cake and kicking over vases and shit. <laughs> it's fucking nuts. It is a nuts what is happening in the background of this scene. You're not going to do crook of the knee stuff with me. I'm just going to eat <laughs> cake all the time and make a bunch of noise while you're having meetings. That's what's happening. There you go. <laughs> That's that. Fuck. That is you. Say something again. Say one more thing. Anyway, that was going <laughs> to. You. <laughs> yep. That's so, the scene. <laughs> oh, I, I got to say, honestly, I'm, I'm, I, I'm sad that this didn't make its way into the movie. But the scenes of her trying to do their talk show when she was fucked up on Ativan are hilarious. They show a couple of them in the documentary. But uh, oh, one of them does make it into oh, the good. movie oh, good. where she tries to walk into a backdrop. It's pretty fantastic. Oh, yes. OK, good. That was the best one. <laughs> we found it. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, to be clear about what's going on in this scene, though, because this is what he eventually went to jail for, or a big part of it anyway, is that he was selling like these lifetime accommodations at this park. He sold twice as many of them as there were actual accommodations and then some. Right. They, 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 it's just they make a big deal sometimes about the fact that this park at its peak was the third most visited theme park in the world after or in the country, rather, after Disney World and Disneyland. And it's just like, yeah. Dude, it was a fucking Ponzi scheme, though. Like, uh, of course it was. It didn't have to make money. <laughs> <laughs> We've released infinity tickets to the Puzzle and a Thunderstorm yeah, Park. <laughs> right. But th I guess that night, Jim has to confront her about how she wants to fuck Ro Messner as well. Yeah. So Ro Messner is the guy who he was pitching with the shares and shit in the last scene. Yes. And mm -hmm. apparently this movie's take is all that like, Heath yells at Bible Peace Theater from the background was her flirting with him. So they've got to have a fight about that. <laughs> okay, to be clear, she would go on to marry this guy. So his suspicions pan out. Yeah, to be fair, in, in defense of Jim Baker, a sentence I thought I would say less than in defense <laughs> of Tammy Faye Baker. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, and they hate each other. And I just want to point out, the, the, this scene doesn't matter because it's just two evil people being like, I don't like you. I don't like you. <laughs> but at this point, the gentleman, the scholar, nay, the hero sitting next to me who had brought his wife and two children cracked a beer because he realized where this movie was. <laughs> I don't know where the beer was. I don't know when he was planning on cracking it, but he just like very loudly was like, and he was like, yep, nope, we made it through the hand jobs. Daddy gets a beer during the movie. 
It's 11 a.m. on a Sunday, everybody. I just, I like that the movie felt the need to remind us that Ronald Reagan was all the way in the baker's corner back then. Mm -hmm. That was a weird moment. Yeah, this whole argument's happening. And out of nowhere, Jim's like, I got a letter from Ronald Reagan. How dare you? don't talk to me that way. I drive a Dodge Stratus. I have a Reagan letter. <laughs> yes, legitimately, yes. And then we get the, I guess, weepy apology for the dry hump scene. Okay, Noah. I'm so curious. Is this in the documentary? No, nothing about her having an affair or giving a hedge to Gary, the sound guy. Apparently, she did talk about like a moment of weakness that she had on air during the Tammy Faye Baker show. And it like caused their things to triple. Yeah, well, right, right. So Jim Baker suddenly realized that he could profit from her infidelity when she apologized to him. She, he, he's like, Wait, you need to totally do this on air. We would make a fortune. That's what a piece of shit he is. <laughs> That's what a piece of shit they both are. Right, well, yes. She was like, I'm sorry, I try out my music producer. And he was like, hey, we could make some money off this. And she was like, wait, let me get another take of that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes. Literally, he says, you need to apologize. And she says, I'm sorry, Jim. And he's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Not to me, to the partners and the people who give us money is who you need to apologize to. Yeah, the people I'm <laughs> feloniously ripping off right now. Yeah, they would be scandalized by this. So, she, yeah, so she goes on air and apologizes for her infidelity and they make a fucking fuck ton of money off of it. Yep, they made money off of that. Everyone got a tote bag with a picture of her and... Gary rubbing their bits <laughs> together through their pants. I'd like to apologize to all our listeners for misinterpreting my tickle fights with Eli. Um, yeah. So <laughs> you want to head over to Patreon or whatever? I don't know. Does this help? Let's not do this. Okay, everyone who changes their name to Tickle Fights for Patreon for the we'll next get week. get a free tote bag. No, we don't. <laughs> get a free, we'll get a ticket to our theme park. <laughs> a lifetime ticket to our theme park. And a penis bump. What the hell? Sure, sure. I like that bit because... We don't read our patron names on air, but friends of the show, Thomas Smith and Andrew Torres over at Opening Arguments do. So next week, they're going to be like, I don't know, there's a lot of stuff about <laughs> hand jobs this week. We don't, we start, we got to listen to the other guys. And they're going to have to do it all more. with like letters. They're going to have to be like HJ right, and yeah. stuff. <laughs> clown horn, clown horn, clown horn, horn clown horn. Everybody's clown horn for like 10 yeah. in a row. Yeah. <laughs> so, That'll be fun. So they're not allowed to swear. Cowards. We're allowed to swear. <laughs> Chew. <laughs> <laughs> all right it was so and then of course now that they made all that infidelity money jim announces that the ptl is hitting the big time and will be able to broadcast 24 hours a day jesus oh did he say 24 7 until jesus comes back right yes yeah he's building in mm -hmm. that caveat Amazing. It's so it's got to be so sad to be a Christian. You pray all the time and nothing works. What like they have this complex constantly, right? You would think. Yeah. yeah. It is a nice reminder that even back in the 1980s they were pitching the world is going to end any minute so we're going live until Yeah, it I does mean also moment. in the 880s, but yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> wrong about that one for a while. But yeah, so no and this is a big actually a pretty big deal. They were the first, I believe, Christian media network that had their own satellites so they could broadcast worldwide. And, you know, obviously, look, they, they were broadcasting into some pretty impoverished parts of the world for the first time. Yeah. This is also where we see them pitching the theme park some more, specifically the Jerusalem themed one. <laughs> yeah, right. Apparently, they were like, yeah, we're going to make uh, Jerusalem, but uh, without all the, you know, Jewy stuff, it's going to be <laughs> that's gross, but like kind of like it, you know. <laughs> All right, well, uh, usually the villain activates his satellite and gets rid of all the Jewy type stuff as, a, as an act three type of thing. So I feel like we might be overdue for a break. But first, let me give the rest of the movie the hard sell. Is Jim Baker really dumb enough to get himself screwed out of three different successful Christian media empires? Yeppers. How the fuck could he not see that third one coming? <laughs> Is too dumb for televangelism really a thing? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the Damn It Jessica Wants an Oscar conclusion of The Eyes of Tammy Faye. Should have been The Hands of Tammy Faye. <laughs> yes! No, because if your ring finger is longer than your pointer, it means you're a genius. No, no, no. It's the other way around. No, no, no. no. He is just saying that because he is not a finger genius. Okay. and he's trying How to did you it. guys not hear about this till now? We, we did this in the third grade. No, what? 
Sorry, are you wearing a wedding band? You don't wear a wedding band. Yeah, I always thought it was so you could have two families, like an Arthur Miller character. Well, I wear one now thanks to Manly Bands. What's Manly Bands? Manly Bands offers wedding bands in way more than boring old gold and silver. With Manly Bands, I have the freedom to look how I want in just about every type of earthly material imaginable and even from space. From space, you say? How does it work? Well, to get started, order the ring sizer to ensure that your ring will fit perfectly during work and play. Once you know your size, it's time for the fun part. They have an insane selection of materials to choose from. Gold, wood, antler, steel, dinosaur bone, and even the meteorites that killed those dinosaurs. That's the one I got when they offered us one to try. Wow, that's so cool that even people who don't necessarily call themselves men might enjoy the product. Absolutely. Once you've selected your band, Manly Bands offers free shipping worldwide, a 30-day exchange policy, and a free warranty. Dang, I might want to get one of those for myself. Where can I learn more? To order your Manly Bands and get 21% off plus a free silicone ring, go to manlybands.com slash awful. That's manlybands.com slash awful for 21% off. Manly Bands, the best damn rings, period. Okay, uh, question. If one wanted to just buy one of these to like have a ring. yeah, well, Yes, Heath, you, you can also buy a ring without being married. Nice. Now, uh, Look at our hands and tell us who is the genius. Yeah, this is Eli. important. Tell neither, me. neither of you. Oh, damn it! I didn't. I didn't need your hands for that. Okay, look at my feet. No. <laughs> genius feet. <laughs> hey, podcast listener. I'm Eli Bosnick, and I'm Heath Enright. And this week's episode really got us thinking. If Jim Baker and Tammy Faye can fill 24-hour network with constant asks for money and idle chit-chat, then surely there's room for a secular version of that as well. That's right, Eli, which is why we're proud to introduce the Puzzle Online channel, providing you six to eight hours a day of secular money-grubbing content. That's right. We'll interview bigots just like they did, sell you stuff just like they did, and fill the rest of the time with our nebulous, underinformed opinions. Damn it, Heath, we made Joe Rogan again. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, we did. We made Joe Rogan. Never mind. Yeah. Scrap it. Sorry. No, uh, never mind. We made Joe Rogan again. We did We did that again. Again? Yeah, yeah, it was again. Damn it. So much money. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit, and we're going to rejoin the action with Heritage USA under construction. Specifically, from what I gather from the notes, they're building themselves a coliseum. Yeah. yeah, this was a weird moment because they set the scene up for like Jerry Falwell to like not be so sure about the Coliseum. Jerry Falwell's going to save this theme park by going down the water slide in a full suit. He would have been like, <laughs> "Woo, Coliseum, put the Teletubbies in it. Well, he saved the park by <laughs> declaring bankruptcy and just keeping the satellite. But yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. But so but based on the notes here, what I'm gathering is there's a desperate attempt here to sort of like place this movie in time and just sort of remind everybody, no, we're totally doing the 80s. This is a period. October 15th, 1984. Yeah, yeah exactly. The yeah. It's the Heath doing a get ahead of movie. <laughs> Apropos of nothing, Ronald Reagan is president, right? How about that? Well, and, and they also discuss Pat Robertson's presidential ambitions here. <laughs> How did those go? Well, let's not gloss over the fact that like, that was dangerously realistic for a moment in, in American history, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, if he went to the Supreme Court, he could have been P-Robes. Robe, <laughs> it's, robe. it's too bad. You'll find it. You'll find yeah, it. Yeah, no, it's too bad. Robes is, is, is too bad. bad. That pun would have made it all worthwhile. I'm Morgan, sure. cut this out while I'm thinking about how to do this pun. <laughs> I'm going to get there. Hey, podcast he, listener. If you're listening Pat, to this, it's because there's Rob, been 45 Rob, minutes Robert of silence. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> Moving on. P. Robespierre? <laughs> so nice, nice. <laughs> God damn it. That's pretty good one way or the other. That was really good. <laughs> Fuck you. All right. So then we get the famous interview that Tammy Faye did with Stephen Peters, the openly gay pastor with AIDS. Yeah. Now, again, this was extremely progressive for the time. The time was 1985. So let's not get carried away. <laughs> You're right. And let's put this thing on the reason that he tv'd into the studio was not because he was undergoing a medical procedure it was because she and her crew were not comfortable having him in the studio because he had aids 
Absolutely. Now, according to him, now he's still alive. He outlived Tammy Faye, apparently. And he was interviewed afterwards about this. And according to him, he always, it, at least he felt that Jim and Tammy would have been fine with him, but they didn't think that the crew would. So that's the line they sold him anyway, is that, well, no, mm -hmm. no, we're not bigots, but our crew. <laughs> yeah. Steve Peters is a fucking badass and a hero. The fact that his incredible bravery is contextualized against this fucking sag demon and her attempt at ratings is a tragedy. Yes, exactly. But of course, we also learned in this scene that Falwell does not approve of all of this, you know, treating gay people as human beings shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is happening. Keep in mind the context. There's a gay man who's doing treatment f for AIDS, right? Mm -hmm. he's, got, he's taking chemo and stuff or whatever they were doing. And Falwell is hearing this interview and he's like, she's not hating a gay guy enough. Get her under fucking control. Yep. Get somebody, <laughs> somebody side tackle or something. Well, yeah, keep in mind, this is a guy who would later be haunted by the sexual orientation of a Teletubby. So, yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And in case you were getting too cozy with Tammy Faye and her sweet, sweet LGBT allyship, this is where we also get reminded that a woman constantly called the station and told them that Jim Baker had raped her and Tammy Faye ignored it actively and silenced members of her staff who asked her about it. Yeah. I wrote in my notes, how's your touchy feely movie now? Huh? How's your touchy feely movie now? Yeah, well, and yeah, so then we get that revelation, the one that Jim Baker is accused of rape by a Playboy model. And honestly, I, I'm going to be truthful with you. I'm surprised how little of a part that's playing in the overall film. Yeah, they very much skirt around this issue because Tammy Faye was so instrumental in silencing this accusation. Right. And th this movie's angle is definitely like that. Tammy Faye was just like a stupid, saggy clown who didn't see that Jim Baker was doing all this bad stuff. But like, right. A casual glance at the reality of this situation is that Tammy Faye was very aware that her husband had raped someone who was a coworker at the time, by the way, had raped someone who was a coworker at the time and did absolutely everything she could to silence this woman and make sure that she got nothing in terms of compensation for what she'd been through. So the movie does like a, oh, yeah, a lady called on the phone the other day. Anyways, I'm addicted to drugs. Well, yeah, they show somehow the fact that he's being accused of rape as her rock bottom. Yeah, it was really hard on her. Yeah, she was the <laughs> one that really suffered because of that. Mm -hmm. This is the scene that we teased earlier where she <laughs> tried to walk through a backdrop of a beach. Yep. Once again, this is a real one you can go watch the video of. Oh, and do look definitely. I'm not saying you should watch this movie. It's rare that we get to say like, you can go and watch this movie that we're reviewing on the show. I would love for eyes of Tammy Faye to be a great hit and eyes of Tammy Faye too to come out. That's just like Jim Baker taking a painful diarrhea shit, but you should definitely watch the clip of Tammy Faye Baker trying to walk into a backdrop of a beach. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But this sets up her trip to the Betty Ford clinic. Apparently she OD'd in real life on this shit. Mm hmm. And then spent exactly one night in a Betty Ford clinic. Yep. I will admit I didn't pay a ton of attention to this scene about the Betty Ford clinic because the pastor in front of me was losing his mind at this point. It was like his chair was stabbing him. <laughs> it was just like, ah, oh, yeah. every word that came out of the character's mouth at this point. I thought he was going to do a barrel roll out of the theater. <laughs> I'm a used car salesman now. <laughs> Wait, so this is the pastor who is in charge of the church group that was there? Yes, yes, in my theater. Wow. Yeah, I think he was going to be a used car salesman at the end of this thing one way or the other, right? Like that, they were going to decide that for him if he didn't do it for himself. Guys, time out. This that mulligan. I call mulligan <laughs> on this whole thing. This doesn't count. This doesn't count. Jesus music is still out. Uh, Jesus music. <laughs> so now it's the next morning. We're back home and, and Jim lets her know that like in case it wasn't clear that we are at the rock bottom portion of the movie and he hates her fucking guts. This is everyone going for their Oscar here. Garfield's going for the Oscar. Chastain's going for the Oscar. I expected the actor who played Jerry Falwell to like drop out of the ceiling and be like, I'm also in this relationship fight. Since it's D'Onofrio. But look, here's the thing, people. I hate these people. I have no empathy for them. I, all my notes are, I want to throw them swords. Fist fight. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why did they make this movie? I don't understand who this is for. 
this scene does feel like they got to this point in the movie and they were all standing there and they were like, these people suck. Why did we huh? make this There's movie? gotta who be, this are there for? people, yeah. there are people who didn't suck who we could have made movies about. Yeah, no, so who this movie was for, like, and that's a big question that all of the reviews are asking. You know, who, who's the intended audience was, who this movie is for is fucking Jessica Chastain, who was pretty sure she could win an Oscar by doing Tammy Faye, mm-hmm. right? But the movie never bothers to establish a purpose beyond that, of what, especially since the documentary is based on already exists. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Didn't Jessica Chastain buy the rights to Tammy Faye's story? Uh, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all. I know she's been trying to get this made for quite a while. Yeah, which is a weird pick. All the people in history that you you can pick anybody you want. <laughs> Maybe it's like, have you ever been on Cameo? I'm obsessed with Cameo, so this might not be super relatable. But sometimes you're on Cameo and you're like, oh, Gary Busey's 200 bucks. Kevin Sorbo's 200 bucks. And then you're like, OK, but that guy who got eliminated from The Bachelor second <laughs> on season 16, he's just twenty five dollars. I'm going to have him wish my wife a happy Hold birthday. Hold on. I don't my my takeaway is that Gary Busey is only $200. Well, yeah, right. No, that's Gary Busey? It's pretty reasonable right there. <laughs> Gary, all we want you to do is get on a camera, start running, and then stop running. That's <laughs> it. You don't even have to say anything. That's it. I just want to see you do that. Just do some 7x15s. You can actually run in place would be fine, really. <laughs> If you're in an enclosed area. That's approximately what would happen to Matt. We will give you $50 <laughs> per jumping jack, Gary. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So they have their big fight. And I guess now it's going to become public. The The fact that he raped this woman and, and paid to cover it up is going to become public. So that, that we get the like scandals about to hit scene. Mm hmm. Yeah, this is where Jerry Falwell and it, it, okay, is this in the documentary? They like he asked them to write down their budget and then he ended up reading it. Yes. Okay, so that's the accusation that Tammy Faye has always made about this particular instant. But why, why don't you just explain it to the audience? Tell them what's going on. So he comes and he's like, it's bad, but don't worry, we're Christians. Our audience are ghouls. They'll probably forgive us instantly because they had moral compasses they wouldn't be giving you money in the first place so what i need you to do we're gonna have you lay low you're gonna write down your monthly expenses and then i'll make sure that you're taken care of and then it cuts to a press conference where he's reading it out loud like can you believe these greedy motherfuckers yeah so so what she says is that he sent the guy and said hey this is what the board has decided to give you you just have to write down that you want it and I'll have something official to put in our records that you requested this and then we'll give it all to you. And and then he went out and read it as though, look at what they're demanding so much. Yeah, I don't believe either of them. I, I honestly think that the piece of paper that he was reading off of doesn't exist because everyone involved has to be lying given who they are. Yes, that's the wonderful thing about this movie. Whenever I would just, because you look, you're watching a movie, you're going to empathize with the thing on the screen. Every time I would be like, oh, I'd be like, nope, don't care about them. Don't care about him. Everybody wins. <laughs> right. Throw them swords. Kumate, kumate, kumate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I also like that he adds that Jim is gay to the press conference. Yes, he does. He does and did. Yep. And he's like, also, like, a lot of dudes said you tried to grab their dicks. Like, a lot of guys. Which is true. Oh. A lot of guys did say that. We need a non-problematic way to make fun of Jim Baker for that more. We talk about him a lot on our other shows, and I need to work that in more. He's got so much other shit to offer up, though. It's true. The problem, every time we talk about him, he's selling a blanket you can put your bills underneath. We don't get around <laughs> exactly. to the raping and the... So now, so to be clear, here's how this actually plays out, regardless of who you believe. I feel like he should just murder more kids with his car to try to get all the news about him. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, over. exactly. Exactly. Everything would get buried beneath that. Hey, it worked for Matthew Broderick. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. But so here's what happened, though, just to be clear to the audience. And, and this is true regardless of whose story you believe. Jerry Falwell stepped in. And said, hey, guys, you know, this scandal is going to really threaten everything that you've built here. I'm going to step in on your behalf and I'll run this for a little while while you lay low and let the scandal go so that it doesn't destroy the PTL network and Heritage USA and all of that shit. And then eventually he's like, yeah, I don't want you coming back because no matter what you do, you'll fuck it all up and capped it, declared bankruptcy, etc. So he did slither his way in here when they were under scandal and, and take their shit. 
or as I put it in my notes, Piggy doesn't trust other Piggy with the pig shit shit. Yeah, ex- <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it was so weird because like, I'm so often the only empathetic person in my theater, right? Like I was sitting there for God's not dead and ever, and she was like, I identify as self partner. And everyone in my theater was like, <laughs> imagine not thinking what I think about sex. And in this movie, it was the opposite. <laughs> everyone in my theater was like, Oh, poor Tammy fan. I was like, get her, get her, light her on fire. <laughs> Burn the house down with them all inside, Jerry Falwell. <laughs> so, Invite your son. <laughs> all right. So now Jim and Tammy, Jim's going to make his big on air apology for the rape and subsequent embezzlement. And apparently this is real. Their apology included a musical number. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> yeah. Like, apparently this clip is fairly faith. The moment we see in the movie is fairly faithful. He was like, me and Tammy have hurt you all, but we don't want to lose your trust. And then Tammy was like, God bless America. No, that's uh, like, you, again, that's in the documentary. You can watch her actually do that and you can watch everybody go like, what? Oh, God, is she doing? The, she's doing the whole song. How do we make this stop? How? Sorry. Did you guys write a sorry for the fraud and sexual assault song? Because <laughs> that's what I'm hearing you do. Or you're improvising that. Don't go breaking my heart. <laughs> Either way, problematic. <sighs> and then we get a montage about the fact that in addition to the religious fraud that is his job, he also was doing regular fraud too, right? Like, so again, raping a woman, then paying her off to keep quiet about it and embezzling the money to do so is not the extent of his crimes, that was just, that was the first one that came to light is all. Mm -hmm. My theater is so unhappy at this scene. Like, it's so, my theater at this point were like writhing in their seat. It it was clockwork orange. I was the doctor and they were all my patients. (laughs) My notes are just, my theater is so mad. I'm so happy. Is it a dick mood for me to stand up and scream, suck it? (laughs) Did you not? I did not. Wow. So, and then we get Jim's infamous perp walk. I saw in Noah's notes, this is a real thing. And I was like, oh, like, so they actually want, no, this is a, and this is loyal in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. It, and it's one of the most famous perp walks of all time because he's bawling. He, they've got him handcuffed. He's got his coat over the handcuffs and he's just crying his eyes out on the way out. Oh. And then she sang. She sang at the press conference. Yep. Of her husband. It's the most awkward video you will ever see where no one dies or like, yeah, no one actually dies during the video. I wrote in my notes, maybe you should try peeing yourself again. That seemed to work better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, OK. So and then, you know, obviously he's in jail. Everything's going bad for her. And then they recreate pretty much the saddest scene from the documentary where she's pitching ideas for the Tammy Faye TV show to a profoundly uninterested <laughs> professor. I, again, at this point, I was like, there's no way Noah is being real. I watched the day. They did like a word for word reenactment. Did they really? Yeah. And it is dark. Well, because the ideas she has are so like, I'm coming up with this shit off the top of my head. Yep. Right. Like if, if you and I were forced to go in and pitch TV shows right now, we would do a better job than she does yeah. with that. Well, she says, I'm going to follow around some teenagers and... That's the show. That's the whole That's thing. The yeah. Go where they yeah. go. So yeah. I guess that is what Eli might say when he was being <laughs> I have ideas after I follow the teenagers. <laughs> you guys just keep interrupting me and tackling me and tickle fighting me. Well, good. <laughs> but the, the response from this exec is great. He's like, wow, I don't know. Maybe talk to a Christian network. The, it's a hard pass. And then there's this like really sad silence. And he's just like, yes, we validate. Get out. <laughs> well so in the documentary he's like yeah i don't really have any need for a talk show person and i don't even know what the fuck you're talking about with the teenagers he says that sounds like something more like lifetime would would do maybe you want to go pitch it to them and she's like can you call them for me right now and he's like yeah yeah man i can they don't know me or anything it would just be like you calling them, but fine and he calls them and they never call her back it comes up the documentary comes up and says and they never they never call her back it was really sad he might as well be faking the phone call bring bring hello <laughs> <laughs> yeah t- my son has a little toy phone that will yeah. be like whoa it's for max that's <laughs> that's what he's doing <laughs> Well, and then and then I guess she goes downstairs and humiliates herself to some teens. 
This is <laughs> this is the part of the movie where I look, I'm not going to say I felt bad for Jim Baker, but like I'm not a perfect person, but knowing that I'm going to make it through corporeal existence without anyone making a movie about how sad my wife was after I ruined her life. That does give me some hope. And Jim Baker doesn't get that. Yep. Jim Baker was there on a Thursday being like, oh, don't have her give the teenagers a headshot. Oh, darn, she doesn't give the teenagers a headshot. <laughs> yeah, if you don't think that movie you're talking about is in I was, You are right so much more confident of that fact <laughs> than I am. So good, no. good for you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So and then just when it seemed like all was lost and she would have to make do with the very substantial sums of money she still had at this point. She gets an invite to sing at an Oral Roberts University event. Oh. <laughs> She's more of a hands than an oral person, but that's <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and then of course we have to close the Jim Baker thread of the of the story. So she visits him in prison. Right. And again, this is just a very like, gosh golly, I did do a raping, didn't I? Like again, I know that this movie is anti Jim Baker. It's just not anti Jim Baker enough for me personally. <laughs> it would have been hard to reach that far. You can't be anti Jim yeah, Baker enough. Right. I don't want a scene where we visit Brock Turner. Like, I don't care. Yeah. But, but I will say something that I learned along the way is that typing Jim Baker in prison is really fun. I typed oh, it an yeah. extra couple of times. <laughs> I kept going back and typing it again. Very satisfying. Calligraphy. Yeah. <laughs> Got to get on one of those TikToks where you pay the person 50 bucks to write your words. <laughs> yeah, but he sure does feel bad for the numerous crimes that he did commit. And then I guess we wrap up mom's character arc like a citation needed skit, right? <laughs> it's took like a speed cut to mom's funeral. Yeah. The theater at this, they were like lost. They're facing other directions. They're doing headstands in the aisle at this point. Yeah, and apparently her obsession with dead people's glasses made it into the film. Yeah, what is this? Yeah, so she that's how the documentary starts. It's, it's with her talking about how she likes to collect the glasses of her dead friends because then she can see through their eyes. What? Yeah, why was that not in the movie? That's the thing that didn't make it into how, the movie. How did they leave? I'm trying to think of something creepier than the collection of dead people's glasses. Like, what would be worse? That's... So they're like trophies. Yeah. No, yeah. she starts showing them off. She's like, these are my mom, my dead mom's glasses. How about that? Yeah. Toenails. They get they the glasses get an origin story in the movie, though. I I am excited about that. So okay, so now she's heading to Oral Roberts University for the big she's gonna sing again thing. Mm-hmm. She does a moment of like you remember early in the movie when she did the puppet with herself as a kid? Mm -hmm. She does a puppet moment with her wig. And I was like, look, if this wig tells her to kill herself, I will buy all the DVD copies of this movie. <laughs> Again, the wig puppet thing also lifted directly from the documentary. Go! Oh, it's so painful. <laughs> it's so real. I know she's a bad guy. It's just, I don't know. You don't have to watch pain like roll around on the ground and be like, oh, it really hurt when Batman kicked me in the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> But in this, is, okay. Yeah. But they should have. Yeah, that. right. They should right, have. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. no. I, I. But then, but I guess she sings us out here. This is the big closing musical number. That moment for where, like, at least for a second, it could seem like she didn't then go on to be a terrible loser that everyone hated until she died. Oh, but in the movie, they really, they really hit you with that. The audience doesn't like her at all. She's imagining herself with a choir and it keeps constantly showing us that it's just in her imagination. This is where I wrote my notes. Damn, I really pride myself on how mean I am to shitty people. But this movie, this movie fucking wins. <laughs> <laughs> my theater, my theater, which at this point was the fucking What's the kids that are on the island and then Piggy die? And they, Lord of the Flies. Yes. My theater was Lord of the Flies at this point, but they tried to <laughs> clap when she sang God Bless America. Like two of them were like, all right. all right, you done redeemed it. Eli's just throwing people off him. Stop trying to put my head on a pike. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Got it. All right. And then I guess we, we wrap up with a quick breakfast club close. Yes. And they were like, hey, Matt Robertson sucks. And Jerry Falwell sucks. But just to just for one more fuck you to all those Christian people in Eli's audience, it ends with Tammy embraced the LGBTQ community. And my theater also 
got angry. They were like, oh, we had the singing and it was kind of, ah, oh, fuck this. <laughs> this, is, this doesn't align with my bigotry. I'm mad again. Well, so she did a talk show where she, she was partnered with an openly gay man, which is I'm sure what they were referring to there. But in a lot of ways, like if you, when you watch the documentary at, at any rate, it comes across that she did that like as revenge against Christianity. So yeah. I don't know how much credit <laughs> I want to give her. Yeah, is I, I have no idea how true that is, but yeah. I did enjoy how much my theater hated it. So. <laughs> and I, I would like to talk about my Breakfast Club clothes yes. because <laughs> the movie ended and my pastor, who had been trying to fold himself into his own asshole for the last <laughs> third of the movie. How close was he? Stands up, pretty close, stands up nice. and goes, hi, everyone. Um, So obviously not everyone who speaks for God is perfect, but God... <laughs> God is perfect. And he pauses for 24 minutes and goes, and obviously our church doesn't have any problems like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then he says, I haven't raped anybody. I yeah. want you guys to know. And then he says, well, we're doing a brunch upstairs. If y'all want to come up, we got pancakes and eggs. And I, I watched him be like, please come to the brunch. We both brunch. <laughs> In this, I went to the AMC in Times Square. So he was like, please, I paid so much money for this Times Square brunch. Don't. I can't believe you didn't go to the brunch. I, I am a coward. And look, there okay. are a few things I regret in life more than not going to this brunch and just walking up to everybody and being like, I liked the movie, didn't what you? you the movie. <laughs> Seriously? Pancakes, pancakes. As this is happening, Eli is weeping with laughter i'm sure because he calls me and he's like here's what's happening and he's trying to explain this to me i couldn't even understand the words for the first two minutes he gets so high pitched he when he's out. that yeah. excited yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. i called heath squealing i was just like there's a brunch there's a brunch yeah. and i was like you're going to the fucking brunch right <laughs> i couldn't if i could have done it with a straight face i would have done it but also to make it funnier the minute he finished being like, there's a brunch, a mad dad stood up and started screaming directly into his mouth. <laughs> and I was just like, ah, oh, I'm not going to make it through this brunch. They're going to, this is a very high building. <laughs> All right. All right. So normally I close by asking about the moral of the story, but judging by that story and Heath's notes, I'm far more curious about this. What lesson do you think Christians going to see this movie learned? <laughs> uh, I think they learned to do a quick Google about the director before you schedule a brunch breakfast waffle <laughs> thing around a church outing to see this movie. Okay, fair. Fair. Oh, I hope they didn't learn that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's going to do it for our review of The Eyes of Tammy Faye, but it's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to prime the pump for next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, just in time for the end of the month, we've got a spooktacular Halloweenication, almost as horrifying as Tammy Faye's face. We'll be watching Bless the Child. I thought we were going to get out of this month tacular free, but I guess not. Okay, <laughs> so with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 322 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that helped make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation to patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoy this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scaling A, The Citation, The D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Card, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres, Tim Robertson handles our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slott and people dress on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright, Neil Bosnick, I'm no illusions promise to work harder or another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club clothes. Tammy Faye went on to learn the Eurogrip and the two-handed fire starter hand jobs, but Jim never got to enjoy it. Oh. The Jerry Falwell Jr.'s wife movie they make in 2046 will be so much better. So much better. Jim Baker saw this movie. At your ass. Oh, he saw it. I want to see him wah, see wah. <laughs> He's just sitting there. Everyone's leaving with their popcorn. He's just like, yeah, well, you, you are. <laughs>
your wife died. I'm having a waffle breakfast after this, too. <laughs> I am sitting here and finishing my waffle. I'm going to go get my ass kicked in the waffle house after this. If anyone wants to come watch, <laughs> it's going to be a lot less painful. <laughs> Uh-oh, I don't see Heath. I don't see Heath either. Oh, no. Fat bitch. Morgan, can you send me this part uh, exchange that we just had? There he is. All right, I'm back. There he is. I hear you. Noah called you a fat bitch while you were gone. I don't know why he would do that. That's fair. It's crazy. I tried it, and I'm just a sucker. So my true bill was like, hey, man, there's no way you're using all this, right? And I was like, I want all those still. And they were like, really? Paramount Plus? And I was like, I want it. <laughs> Don't hey tell man, me did I'm... you sign up for Truebill three times and pay us three times? <laughs> All right. You have a scribbled account, Eli. When's the last time you read a book? I might read a book. You don't know. <laughs> Hello. You have a JSTOR subscription? <laughs> really? <laughs> really? <laughs> What if all of our listeners tried Truebill and they realized they're still patrons and we'd we like lose all our money? Oh, <laughs> I feel like that's there's a danger in advertising. There is a danger in the Truebill, yeah. All right, except for Patreon. If you cancel Patreon, you get blood cancer. Yep, blood cancer. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.